everyone welcome back to our channel so today we are going to discuss the remaining part of our electric vehicle already we have been discussed what are the different types of ev configurations and now we are going to perform this electric vehicle performance analysis okay so already performance analysis so already we had already discussed this performance analysis one is maximum cruising speed so maximum cruising speed and second one is the gradability of the electric vehicle gradability of electric vehicle and third one is the accelerating time of the electric vehicle so all these we had already discussed so those are not uh, view this video it will be left in the cart you can see in this video so now we are going to evaluate this uh, perform ev performance analysis so coming to this ev performance analysis if we understand this uh, what is the maximum cruising speed an electric vehicle can be driven and what is the gradable angle generally gradable angle ranges from 8 degrees to 12 degrees so if the gradable angle is greater automatically you can fix that this electric vehicle will be costlier which offers under low speed it can deliver high torque so if you want to use this kind of features low speed with high torque definitely you have to use a permanent magnet synchronous motor so these motors are only capable under low speeds they can deliver high torque so this vehicles only will have high gradable angle so due to all this feature the cost of this electric vehicle will be a premium one so this is all about uh, the performance evaluation now we need to find out uh, what is the total energy consumed by the battery of an electric vehicle so the energy consumption made by an electric vehicle so energy is generally we write in it as uh, power into time which is also can be written as watt into time we call it as uh, energy but here we are defining it as a uh, integral of power output of the battery plus integral of power input of the battery so here when you write down this in uh, two fractions so which we can understand uh, this is output power this is input power so this is the output power of the battery which is nothing but uh, which is used to propel the vehicle that's why it is called traction or integration and when the vehicle is uh, running on the road uh, when you apply the brake automatically it undergoes a regenerative braking so that's why we are integrating with the integral of traction and reverse it is regenerative braking integral of braking so this is how we are going to dt so into dt automatic differential integral becomes cancelled out which is nothing but power into time which is nothing but this is the energy consumption made by an electric vehicle now coming to the concepts so all if you understand the dynamics of an electric vehicle all these equations are uh, very simple now let us try to calculate uh, the power output of a battery so what is this power output of a battery so generally what a battery will deliver output so battery output uh, this is nothing but p output is nothing but uh, the battery output so where this battery output goes will goes to the motor input okay so battery output is nothing but the output of the battery goes to the motor so reverse will happen in p input there this motor will try to act like a generator and this motor is act like a generator automatically the battery gets charged therefore the battery gets charging is called as a battery input now let's try to calculate this uh, p output so p output we are going to write on it as a so it is like a numerical formula we have in the numerator the velocity divided by eta t and multiplied with eta m so what is this uh, eta t and eta m is nothing but we have this uh, transmission losses which is nothing but power losses in the torque splitter or the gear okay and eta m is called as power loss in the motor torque so this is called as power loss in the drive 
So we have in wheel drive. So this is called as the power loss in the motor drive. So this is the power loss in the transmission system. So where V is called as the velocity of the vehicle. Already from the speed, we are going to calculate uh, the velocity of the electric vehicle. So this velocity means uh, it's like pickup. Uh, so generally these electric vehicles travel with uh, 60 kilometers per hour like this is all the velocity of the electric vehicle and all these factors are multiplied and first this is nothing but um, uh, the battery output which makes electric vehicle to move forward let's try to consider this is an tractive force so due to the battery output motor is trying to move to the forward direction but there are some forces which are acting in opposite direction to that of the uh, so there are some forces which are acting opposite direction of that of the battery where this is called as a m first force is nothing but a m g multiplied with fr already we defined all this term where m g is called as a the mass of electric vehicle and fr is called as a rolling resistance okay so this is nothing but uh, coefficient of so rolling 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 resistance yeah. rolling resistance yeah. coefficient so this is the first force which is acting in opposite direction and there exists one more force which acts in opposite direction is nothing but mg into i so already we discussed what is meant by mg mg is nothing but the mass of the vehicle so already vehicle will have some 600 kgs or 500 kgs which is called the mass of the electric vehicle and i is called as the road grade already we discussed the gradability every road has some sort of grade angle so generally this grade angle for a low cost vehicle it varies from 12 degrees 8 degrees to 12 degrees so that where this grade is called as the road grade how much grade or the grade angle is there for that road which is called as a grid angle you see here battery is giving the output battery is giving output means who has to take that input motor has to take the input the motor is taking input and trying to trying to propel the vehicle in which direction forward direction but all these which are there in left hand side is nothing but make the vehicle to move in forward direction but there are some vehicles which make the vehicle to move in opposite direction all these are called as a opposing forces First opposing force is vehicle mass of the vehicle. If the mass of the vehicle is greater, it cannot move forward direction safely. So it depends upon the mass of the vehicle. It depends upon the rolling resistance and it depends upon the mass of the vehicle and road grade. So if your electric vehicle is timing uh, from Tirumala, so this is Tirupati, this is Tirumala. So when you travel from uh, Tirupati to Tirumala, we need to overcome more amount of grade angle. That is called as a the road grade and the one opposing factor is nothing but uh, the physical parameters of that electric vehicle that loss we are going to render it as a uh, half into so if you had watched my previous videos all this you can understand better where i have been uh, detailedly discussed uh, what are the electric vehicle performance evaluating performance uh, the cruising speed the gradability and acceleration please watch that video and watch this uh, continuation where you can understand uh, how we are going to evaluate uh, the EV performance analysis. Uh, the next opposing factor is nothing but uh, half rho A and multiplied with uh, CD. So you may ask, sir, why you are not doing derivation? This is not like a derivative part. All these formulas are called as uh, empirical formulas. I mean, so the scientists do the analysis and they develop this formula just having a correlation between uh, left hand side and right hand side that's why these formulas are called as uh, empirical formula there is no proof for all these uh, things just we link uh, one parameter with another parameter and we balance right hand side to the left hand side that is all these formulas called empirical formulas and the next loss is half rho a c d a f into v square this is one kind of loss and already we discussed this where this rho a is called as a uh, air density factor okay so this is called air density factor and this is called as a aerodynamic drag coefficient ad is called 
एरो डायनेमिक ड्रैग कोफिशेंट सो वट इज दिस एरो डायनेमिक ड्रैग कोफिशेंट इज सो एलेक्ट्रिक वेहिकल एट द फ्रंट एरिया यू कैन सी हियर दे हेव एन ए कर्व लाइक दिस and the wind enters like this uh, automatically wind can easily escape okay so wind can easily escape uh, and we have a curvature like this so you can see the front area of the electric vehicle or any ic engine will have a front end facing will be in down shape or like this a curved so you can see the front end of electric vehicle is never and flat like this so you, if we have this much amount of flat so the air uh, obstructs more and vehicle cannot propel uh, forward direction so we have to design this aerodynamic drag coefficient so you, the front part which touches the wind is the lamps this nothing but the front lamp which touches so therefore they are provided like a conical structure or paraboloid structure so where easily it can penetrate into the wind that is called as half rho a ad where it's called aerodynamic drag coefficient and next one is called as af where af is called as vehicle front area so af is nothing but vehicle so here you can see f is nothing but front a is nothing but area so vehicle front area should be designed it should be like an cone like this so like an parabolic nature then only it can escape from the wind pressure automatically it can propel with a higher speed so that is called as uh, is an opposing force that's what is called vehicle front area multiplied with the vehicle speed or velocity of the speed and one more opposing factor is also there which is nothing but uh, the mass of the vehicle multiplied with uh, delta so every vehicle whenever they are rotating on the road they have some sort of uh, what is called uh, rotational i mean uh, rotational inertia factor so all these electric vehicles rotate in air and they are going to have rotational inertia so due to inertia only they come to zero speed inertia is nothing but uh, some mass which make the electric vehicle to come to zero speed if the acceleration is not available that is called as inertia if for example if you turn on the fan it is running for some duration as soon as you remove the power automatically if you remove the power due to weight it comes to zero so that is called the weight of the motor where this is also called rotational inertia factor multiplied with the acceleration so what is meant by acceleration differential of velocity is called as acceleration so all these factors are making the electric vehicle not to move on the road but there is one factor which makes to move on the road which is nothing but called as a tractive force this tractive force is supplied by whom the motor who is supplying the energy to the motor battery supplying power to the motor that's why this is called the forces which are acting in opposite direction now successfully our battery is giving the output that output is taken by the motor where this force we are going to call as a the power output of an battery or we call it as a attractive force which makes the electric vehicle to move forward so we vehicle will move forward if you give energy to the motor only it will move forward so this is all about uh, the first one so the next one is also very simple if you understand this no first unit if you understand all the parts are very simple so now uh, the motor is running and it is trying to climb from it's very simple uh, it's trying to climb from tirupati to tirumala it has reached tirumala now when you come down from the hills from tirumala to tirupati you can see here you have a negative slope you no need to run the vehicle automatically due to this negative slope it comes from directly from tirumala to tirupati why because it has a negative slope so therefore where this previously which was acting like a motor will try to act like an generator and automatically it will generate the power that power will be there to charge the battery where this concept is beautiful it is called regenerative braking concept so if you apply the brake also the battery gets charged which is called regenerative braking so you can uh, see our channel we have a lot of uh, practical demonstration videos uh, how to how an electric vehicle has an uh, regenerative braking and how it charges the battery that is called regenerative braking now let's try to understand uh, this concept so now we understood that this output of an battery and we require an input of an battery what is input of an battery so we have to give some input energy to the battery so who will give the input energy to the battery which was acting like a motor has to act like an generator so now this battery should able to charge so the input energy to the battery 
comes from the regenerative braking concept. So this very very I had done some one experiment in the lab also regarding this regenerative braking. You can watch it in our channel or I will leave you in the card. You can see how practically to operate a motor as generator or generator as a motor which is called regenerative braking. I have been experienced in the lab. So I will attach that video with the help of an DC shunt motor. You can see that regenerative braking. So here when you are having a regenerative braking here also it is the same. In the numerator you have the velocity divided by it has a power loss in the uh, transmission or gearbox and it has the power loss in the drive but additionally here it is scaled with alpha. Sir what is meant by alpha? Where alpha is called as a so regenerative braking factor ok so alpha is called as regenerative braking factor how much braking factor ok regenerative braking factor and this ranges from 0 to 1 so this the range of alpha varies from 0 to 1 so when it comes from a hill area topmost hill area to an normal area you no need to propel the vehicle so this has a negative slope automatically due to this negative slope so the vehicle will easily come down and which was acting like a motor is trying to act like a generator all the factors are there additionally what we added in regenerative braking is alpha where this alpha is called as regenerative braking factor and it ranges from 0 to 1 and it once again the equation is multiplied with the same formula where mg is called mass of the vehicle and fr is called as rolling coefficient the road friction coefficient multiplied with the mass of the vehicle, multiplied with the road angle, multiplied with the opposing forces, half aid density factor into CD, where this is called aerodynamic drive coefficient, multiplied with the vehicle front area, multiplied with the velocity square, multiplied with the mass of the vehicle, multiplied with the delta, where delta is called as, so this vehicle uh, rotates on the road, if it rotates on the road, what is there? Inertia is there, therefore, this delta is called as a rotational inertia factor, rotational inertia factor m del multiplied with dv by dt. You see here, I already told, uh, here we have positive acceleration and negative acceleration. Now vehicle is coming from Tirumala to Tirupati, you have a negative slope, therefore the acceleration is also negative and you have this uh, force which is and this i where the road angle road angle is also negative here so road is also of negative slope and acceleration is also of negative slope therefore now the previously the battery was discharging now due to all these negative forces the motor acts like a generator now your battery starts charging this concept or this beautiful concept is called as regenerative braking concept so now successfully we understood uh, so here the regenerative braking concept so since all these terms are of negative you get a negative energy so whenever the battery is discharging we consider it as positive so your battery is discharging we consider it as positive now what happens is uh, now the battery is charging so that's where you are going to call it as a negative so this is a battery is discharged where we are going to call it as output power of the battery now our battery is getting charged due to regenerative braking where it is called input power of the battery. Just add these two powers you are going to get the resultant power. So therefore the energy output or net energy consumed from the battery or total energy of the battery this is called net or the total energy consumption from the battery. So how much you are consuming the battery while it is charging and while it is discharging net energy consumption from the battery is nothing but integral of power output of the battery plus integral of power input to the battery. So this power input to the battery will act like an negative and this will act like an positive. So here the vehicle it is acting like a motor this is acting like an traction which is nothing but it acts like a motor and this will try to act like a regenerative braking. So integral of regenerative braking this is called regenerative braking this is called traction I mean integral of traction the power output of a battery 
integral of degenerative braking the input power is nothing but uh, input power to the battery so that's how we developed the net energy consumed from the battery so this is the battery is discharging this is the factor the battery is char charging okay this is called the net energy and this is nothing but uh, factor of dt the differential integral get cancelled out so this p into p output of the battery multiplied with time plus p input of the battery multiplied with time power into time is nothing but energy output of a battery plus energy input of a battery is net energy so energy output we can write it as in our layman language watt hour output plus watt hour input so this is all about uh, the energy consumption from the battery or the net energy consumption from the battery so next we'll try to meet in the next session we'll discuss about uh, energy efficiency of an ic engine and electric vehicle so in the subject electric vehicle subject uh, only this analysis is very tough so this uh, performance characteristics and uh, the dynamic characteristics of this electric vehicle is only tough but once you understand the concept the term things becomes very so directly you cannot understand the class we have to go to the previous session where we have so where we have so ev performance analysis and where we have we have to understand this ev performance analysis speed gradient and acceleration and you have to understand all this it's very simple so i am recalling it the battery output is a factor of velocity divided by power losses in the transmission power loss of the drive multiplied with mg mass of the vehicle into rolling resistance mass of the vehicle into grade road angle plus half into air density factor air road angle drag, drag force multiplied with uh, vehicle front area multiplied with velocity square and mass and all this this will become negative and this will become negative automatically the which was uh, consuming the energy now it will try to charge our electric vehicle and this mode of its operation is called regenerative braking mode hope the video is uh, useful to you and if you are able to understand so try to recall this once or twice then you can understand it so hope uh, the video is useful please like the video share the video with your friends and subscribe the channel for more updates so please try to encourage these sort of good channels which are useful to students uh, such a way that we will put our lot of efforts to the give good content to the students uh, without any subscription or without any premium subscription so thank you for promoting uh, the good channel so you are so obediently long thank you for watching